So hi, I'm Lucy. I'm from Digital Marketing for Graduates. Um, it's a new business, um, but I'm not going to bore you with what my business is all about um, because I've been asked to talk today about what employers want in a modern world. So, um, perhaps you can't hear me. <laughs> and hello to the newcomers. Um, I'm Lucy, Digital Marketing for Graduates. Um, we've only just started, so that's fine. Um, so what employers look for in the modern world, um, it's not that different to what employers look for um, or have been looking for over the years anyway. So that's to say um, that you are a good fit for their organisation, that you have the right sort of experience and that you have the capability and aptitude to do the job. The big difference today, I think, um, and what you're probably all expecting me to talk about, is that employers are increasingly looking for you to have digital skills. So whether that's um, you know, a software development role, which is clearly um, a digital role, um, or whether you want to work in customer services or sales or marketing, all employers are looking for you to have some digital skills and some digital savvy. And at Digital Marketing for Graduates, we call that having the skills that count. Um, and so what, what I really want to talk to you today about is how you can demonstrate that you have digital skills right from the very beginning when you start your job search. So I'm going to look at, I think, five or so different ways in which um, your, you can use digital skills in your job search to show employers that you are um, digitally savvy. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Don't worry, you've not missed very much. A couple of rubbish pictures, um, that's about it. So um, the first thing um, I think we all need to consider, certainly way before you even start applying for jobs, is um, your digital footprint and what you're leaving trailing around the internet. Um, I don't know how many of you sitting here can think about a embarrassing picture that you might have on Facebook or on Instagram that would be awful if a potential employer saw it. Um, I know I can probably think of a few, so it's fortunate that I'm not going for jobs at the moment. Um, but, um, you know, that, that's something to, to definitely consider, what, what you're saying about yourself on social media and elsewhere on the internet. Um, so these two beauties are um, I'm part of my extended family. They're not related to me, I'm pleased to say, but they are at university currently. And, and so I think, you know, it's likely these type of pictures are put up on Facebook. Um, the first thing an employer is going to do when you make a job application is if they're savvy and if they're looking for you to be skilled in digital is they're going to look you up online. They're going to see what you're up to. Um, so hide anything that like, looks like this um, or anything you consider that you wouldn't want a potential employer to, to see. Um, if your Facebook profile isn't, um, uh, if it's not private, which I'll talk to you about in just a second, then make sure your cover photo and your um, Profile photo is definitely better than this. I'm not sure how well you can see these pictures, um, but boozing in your profile photo probably isn't um, the best thing for you to be doing. <coughs> and you can make your settings private on all the social networks, and that's something I'd advise you do immediately. So here you can see um, I've set mine to private, so only my friends can see my future posts. Um, only friends of friends can send me friend requests and only um, friends can look me up by my email address, my personal email address and my um, phone number. So that's, um, and you can do the same um, on Instagram. Um, you can see here that um, if your account's private, then people have to request to um, uh, look at your photos. So they're, they're just good things to do immediately um, before you start applying for jobs. 
And the second thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to research, how to use your digital skills to research employment opportunities. Um, and specifically, I'd like to um, talk about advanced Google techniques. And this is some stuff that we, we learn about or we do um, in my company, um, not to look for jobs, but, but to, do, to find things more easily on Google. Um, and I hope I'm not teaching you all to suck eggs and you know all this stuff already. Hopefully there's some useful nuggets in here. Um, <clears throat> so the first one is called All In URL. And um, the idea with this is that you're looking for your, the, the job title um, to be in the URL. So often with job sites, it'll be, I don't know, www.totaljobs.com forward slash the title of the job. So if you're looking to be, I've used digital marketing assistant as this um, example, if you're looking to apply for digital marketing roles, rather than trailing through the internet, um, something like this just speeds it up. They'll, it'll just return all the URLs of digital marketing assistant in the um, URL. But more than that, you can click on tools on the right hand side and you can say, actually, I want to filter these results down to the past week. Um, and I also just want to look at UK results, so you can filter it down to the company. And you can do the same with all in title. Um, so title just refers to the page title. Um, and here I'll just use an example of the Guardian jobs website where you can clearly see the page title, um, digital marketing assistant. But if any of you know anything about SEO, all in title, what Google's actually looking at is looking for the meta title in the HTML. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be on the, the, the page. Um, but what it does the same thing as all in URL. It just looks for all the pages on the internet that have um, been published within the time frame that you've just specified on Google. And then another good one to um, work on, and I use this a fair amount, um, is site search on Google. Um, so you put if you want digital marketing assistant, if you want all of those words, you put it in um, uh, inverted commas, and you then put site comma, sorry, site colon, and then the website URL. And what that does is it just brings you up all the results on um, that particular site with your particular key phrase. Um, I think all these slides are going to get made available to you afterwards, um, so you should be able to just um, copy what I've got on here um, and make it work for you, hopefully. And the next one is a related search. Um, so and this, this works in, you know, for all sorts of things, but in your context of looking for a job, um, you put related colon and then the website. So you can see here I've put in totaljobs.com um, and Google will just return job sites. So if you've exhausted looking at all the job sites that you know of, maybe this might be quite a good one um, to find more. Um, and again, you can put in, you can use the tools on Google to um, filter the websites down. So if you say like in the past month, at least you know the website has been updated with something in the past month. And lastly, I imagine most of you do know about this, but um, Google Runner um, have a service called Google Alerts. Um, the targeting isn't quite as specific or as strong as the, um, the targeting that I've just shown you, but you can set up an alert for a particular keyword and Google will email that, those results to you um, on a um, daily or weekly or as it happens basis. Um, so that can be quite nice to get, make sure you get the notifications every time a new job is posted on the internet. So I just now would like to sort of talk to you a bit more about how you can actually engage employers online. So obviously you can go and apply for jobs, um, but sometimes it's about um, making a direct approach. Sometimes it's about making more of an impression on an employer before an interview. Um, maybe you um, want to have a conversation with them and it's about how you can get yourself, no how, how you can make yourself noticed in a good way. So I always start with LinkedIn. Um, for any research that I do, because LinkedIn is, has got a huge database of professionals, 
depending on which um, area of work you're thinking about going into, um, LinkedIn will probably have the people and the companies um, listed on on there. So <clears throat> a good place to start. So all you do is you, I've used Wired Sussex um, for this example, I'm sure they won't mind. I've just searched for Wired Sussex um, and LinkedIn, I don't know if you know, the interface has changed recently, so this is what it looks like now. And along the top, there are different categories to look at. And so if you're, um, you know, you've got an idea of a particular company that you quite like to work for, I would search for them, then go through those tabs at the top and see how best um, you see how you want to engage um, with that company. So, um, so you can see here, um, I've clicked on the companies tab and um, I have clicked to follow Wired Sussex. So that's, you follow the company and by following the company, all their company updates come up in your feed. So that if they were to make, put job application, put job um, adverts up, you'd see those. You'll also see um, their posts and what they're doing. So it's a good idea to follow their company. And then the next thing to do um, is a good idea to look up the right people at the company. So maybe you're looking, if it's a big organisation, maybe you're looking for the HR managers, maybe you're looking for the marketing managers if you're going for a digital marketing job. Um, but you can look them up on here and then you can um, either you can connect with them first of all, and if you're connected with them, you can message them. Um, so you can see there, I'm already connected to Virginie, who's the event organizer here. Um, so I'd be able to send her a direct message. And on the right hand side of this screen, you can see um, that you can filter um, the results down. So some companies will have hundreds of employees, so you can um, filter those results to try and find um, the people that are really relevant for you. Um, and I find I get nine times out of 10 people accepting connections on LinkedIn. Um, I, I think it's, it's natural and normal, so don't worry about asking someone to connect with you. And lastly here, you can look at um, their posts. And this is sort of where you can start thinking about um, making a connection uh, with them. So maybe you'd comment or like or share their posts. And that's how you can start to get noticed by um, businesses. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're really trying to make the initial connections, but then try and get noticed. Um, I'm just going to tell you a story. Um, I wasn't applying for a job, so it's a slightly different context, but it's an, it's an example of how you can use social media to get noticed online. So my business, I mentioned earlier, it's new. Um, and I wanted to make partnerships um, with other businesses in my space. And the ultimate one for me is Milk Ground Online because they are the biggest, the UK's biggest student and graduate um, site. And so I went onto LinkedIn and I'd just done all the things that I told you about. I connected with them, I followed the company. I then went on, found the people I thought who were relevant and I connected with them. And I was waiting for them to accept my connections and a couple of them did and then I messaged them and I didn't hear anything back. So I was thinking, God, what can I do? So then I went to Twitter. So I started, I made posts on Twitter from their blog. So rather than just retweeting what they put out on Twitter, I decided I'd go to their blog, I'd find the blog posts that are most relevant for my audience, and I'd create fresh tweets and I'd just promote them. Not asking for anything, not, not asking them for anything, but just promoting them, just being nice to them. And um, so this is an example of it, actually. So in the top one, top left-hand corner, that's one of the posts that I did. So um, I made sure that I put via at Milk Ground Online in the post. So that then pops up on their side so they could see me doing that. that. And no word of a lie, two weeks later, I got an email from the partnerships manager at Milk Ground Online saying, let's talk. You're promoting our content anyway. Come and Come, come and talk to us, let's do something. Um, now, I'm not saying that that exact thing is going to happen for you looking for jobs, but if you can give or show you can provide value to a future employer, perhaps you can say good things about their posts, perhaps you can promote them in some way, but it will get you noticed. And I think if you can get yourself noticed in the right way, at the point at which you go into an interview, 
um, it, you know, it will put you ahead of another candidate, potentially put you ahead of another candidate who hasn't done that. And this is just an example to show you here now um, when I'm promoting Milk Round, they like and um, retweet all the things that I put up. And that, for me as a business, I know this isn't terribly relevant for you looking for jobs, but um, it means that my name then goes out in front of their huge Twitter following, um, which is great for me. So the fourth thing um, that I'd like to talk to you about today is um, a little bit of a trick of how to contact the employer. Um, I feel strongly nowadays that you shouldn't, you should always be able to find someone's email address out. Um, and I hear a lot of, um, I deal with graduates mainly, but um, some people say to me, I find it really difficult to find out the name and the email address of the right person. Um, and there's actually a really cool tool that you can use to find and find email addresses online. Um, it's called Hunter, and it's a Chrome extension, um, as well as just being a, um, uh, a, a tool online. And you can see here it works with LinkedIn, so I would recommend going back to LinkedIn. Say your people don't connect with you, <clears throat> or you haven't even gone through the process of connecting with them yet. Um, what you can do is do your search, find the people, and if you've got the Chrome extension um, downloaded onto your browser, you will see these little, I think it's a fox, or maybe it's a wolf, I'm not sure, um, a little orange one. You see where I've put the pink um, circles around. You can just go down and pick the people's whose email addresses you want. So rather than going into each LinkedIn profile, some of them will be hidden from you because they haven't got their settings set to open. You can just go through and this tool will give you back the email addresses that it knows. It doesn't know all of them, but it, it's pretty good. Um, so that's, that's that, just ticking the boxes. When you tick the boxes, this other box comes up on the left. Again, I did um, Wired Sussex because I thought they wouldn't mind. Um, and it tells you down the edge there, I don't, it's probably a bit um, faint, you can't see it, but it tells you which ones um, it's saved. The other thing you can do is you can just go to their website and you can stick a company URL in the box and it will return you all the email addresses that it knows at that company. Um, but that way you won't necessarily know their um, job title. Um, you get 150 requests for free. Um, I don't work for them, so this isn't like a promotion. Um, <laughs> but I think it's very cool. It, it's where I get all my data from. Um, and you just log in and you retrieve the email addresses from inside the Hunter account. Um, you don't need to put a credit card in, you just, si you just sign up. Um, and the other thing that you can do, just the last example of this, you can go onto any website you want, again, just using Wired Sussex as my guinea pigs, um, and you can see the um, fox icon in the corner, and if you click on that, um, it actually just brings up the list of email addresses. So if you've been on LinkedIn and you know you're looking for Phil and Rosalie, then there are their email addresses at the top. There's green dots next to them because Hunter knows they work. Um, if there's an orange dot, they might not work. If there's a red dot, they probably don't work. And it tells you how many different places it's found those email addresses, not just on that website, but across the internet. So um, hopefully that's a useful tool um, to find employers' um, email addresses. Um, and just lastly, again, onto LinkedIn. Um, so I know I've been talking a bit about LinkedIn as well, and I also don't work for them either. Um, but they, um, they are, it, it's great. If you're job seeking, this is where you should be hanging out, I think. Um, so I don't know if everyone's like really familiar with the LinkedIn settings, but are you easy to contact on LinkedIn? Is your email address on there? Is it up to date? Is your phone number on there? Is it up to date? Um, it, more and more and more people are getting headhunted and getting found on LinkedIn. And so you want to make sure that your details are easy to find. And so you just go into the settings, which is found on the top right um, of the LinkedIn or your LinkedIn profile. 
and just make sure your email address and your phone numbers are up to date and also that your um, profile is searchable um, and isn't set, you know, hasn't got the <clears throat> full privacy settings on it. Um, you want people to find you. The next thing is to try and make an immediate impression on um, your profile. So when an employer gets there, it hasn't just got the boring LinkedIn blue banner at the top. Um, and it's got a reasonably professional headshot photograph of you. Um, it's good to, for an employer to be able to see you properly. So, you know, not a photo that's cropped or not a photo with you with your arm around somebody. Um, just, you know, a nice headshot view. Um, and something interesting behind on the cover, cover profile. And I, just to say, that kind of thing just shows that you're digitally savvy and you're moving, you know, you're using the tools that are available to you. Um, here are a couple of examples of other um, profiles I searched for and I thought looked pretty good. Um, he does work for LinkedIn and uh, I think LinkedIn probably give you the, the you're closer than you think astronaut banner, um, but I thought it was quite cool. Um, this chap I thought his banner was quite cool, but actually his profile picture isn't. Although you can see, maybe you can see, that he's just won an award, but you can't really see who he is and you don't know which one of the two he is. Um, so I think um, always making sure it's just you in the box is a good idea. Um, and this one, um, again, just another kind of more interesting um, banner um, and, a, and a reasonable profile photo. Probably better to have a plain background in your profile photo if you can, but um, I think that looks fine. Um, now this is one that so many people don't do, um, but making sure that your LinkedIn profile is kept up to date is really, really important because LinkedIn is the place that employers are going to go to. It's the first place I go to if I look to hire someone. And it's really disappointing if, if what they've put on their CV doesn't match what's on their LinkedIn profile. And in actual fact, you can make your LinkedIn profile an extension of your CV. You can put everything up there. You can put videos. You can put um, projects you've worked on. You can really, really br use it to bring yourself to life. Um, and by doing that, you're showing that you have digital savvy. I always think you should ask for recommendations. Um, People are usually really willing to give recommendations, but an endorsement of you, again, if an employer goes to your profile and you've got loads of um, recommendations and really, you know, people saying positive things about you, um, it goes a long, long way. Um, and it's very easy to do. I'd have a minimum of three, because I think after three, it, it shuts off and then you have to click to look for more. So three, I think, is your minimum. And then following relevant groups, so we touched on this earlier, but just by following, you know, if you want a job in um, sales, if you follow relevant kind of sales organisations, um, or if you want to work in marketing like I do, following the marketing groups, A, it gives you the information because it just pops into your feed, so you can have like knowledgeable things to talk about, but an employer who's scrolling down um, and sees you're following groups that they know of um, and that they think are good. It just adds credence to the, to, to the whole of your profile. So that's just um, a, a really quick checklist for you that I thought I'd include. Um, so just making sure it looks professional, keeping everything up to date, your contact details are up to date, three recommendations, follow relevant groups. That's the minimum. There's loads of other stuff you can do on LinkedIn, but as a minimum, I'd do that. Um, to make sure that you look um, kind of digitally savvy. And then the next thing um, I would do is make sure on my CV that I'm actually pointing the recruiter to the right place. So I'm, show I'm saying I want you to look at my LinkedIn because I've updated it all and it there's loads of good information up there. I also want you to look at the projects that I've worked on, the websites that I've worked on, um, anything that's today got a link to it, that you, that you, anything that you've worked on, anything you've done at university or in any of your jobs, put a link to it because it's interesting. It's more interesting than a bunch of words on a piece of paper on a CV. 